Hello, I'm Monty Beatham, and thank you for choosing Once a Warrior. We're going to go all the way over to Manchester, England now for our next guest. Elijah Taylor, how are you, my man? Monty, thanks for having me on, man. I'm good. How are you? I I'm very good. You're looking sharp. You just finished training. Uh, you're still playing. I can't believe you're still carving, man. I wouldn't say carving, but um, we're playing in the second division trying to get up to Super League, so the competition isn't as strong as it I'm used to. Uh, we've got a ambitious club that wants to get into Super League next year, so uh, we've got lofty goals and we're working hard to achieve that. And what's keeping you busy off the field besides uh, making babies, man? Four, four young girls, I believe. Yeah, yeah, a lot of girls. Um, I'm doing music as well. Uh, it's part-time at Featherston, so we train at night time so I can do music uh, during the day. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much. Elijah, it's been 12 years since uh, you first put on the Warriors jumper, man. I think it's time we remind yourself and the fans of just how good you were. Here's Taylor. Can't hold on to him. And Elijah Taylor set up. Taylor. Taylor will score. Brilliant. Warriors are in. And Taylor. It was a beautiful offload there. Into a hole, Elijah Taylor, the free running back rower. Elijah Taylor, Taylor has scored for the Warriors. Now Taylor, Elijah Taylor. Elijah, when you watch that back, man, uh, what sort of memories uh, come to mind? How do you feel? Yeah, it's uh, pretty surreal. It's gone so quick. I remember Lance O'Hire telling me in my debut year that he's, he was saying that it's going to go so quick, and, and, and it has. I remember, you know, being young in the first grade team in 2011, finally getting a debut with Simon, uh, Benny Matz, um, Russell Packer and that, and great memories, great first year as well. We managed to make the grand final, and uh, unfortunately we, we couldn't get it, but I learned a lot from that year, and I had great, great memories at the Warriors. All right, mate, boy, I'm going to slow you right down. I want to take control now because we've got so much to talk to you because you actually had a career before we even see you play first grade and debut because, you know, you played 52 games in the uh, Toyota Cup, uh, 14 tries, and that was all played out on TV. Um, uh, do you think that was a big part to your growth and to, you know, being such a household name before you even played first grade? Definitely. I think the pathways at the Warriors uh, was so clear. You went from under development to under 20s to New South Wales Cup into first grade. Um, and, and the years I was there, the 20s was so important for player development. And I know a lot of players from first 15, they wanted to come to the under 20s because uh, it was so professional and we got to travel to Australia. We played against the best juniors in Australia. We played at the big stadiums that before first grade always couldn't raise their games. So um, I learned a lot and you learn a lot in the 20s, you know, how to be professional, and how to you know, hotels, buses, airports. Um, and I'm so grateful for my time there. I, I look back and we were so spoiled as kids. We were 17, 16, um, sponsored by the Warriors, great club. Uh, we got everything like airpoints, iPhones. Oh, bro, the list goes on. Free Puma gears, free Essex. Um, yeah, looking back on now, we were so spoiled. And I took it for granted because uh, I thought it was always going to be like that every club you go to, but that's not the case. What was the most important lesson that that taught you before you came into grade? Because, I mean, that was a baptism of fire as well. Yeah, it just taught you the, the basics of building pressure um, and playing against the best Australians that came through SG Ball and Harold Matz. And we never got that at the Warriors because we were just straight from development and then into under-20s. So uh, it was a bit of a wake-up call on how to play set for set arm wrestle rugby league, where back in New Zealand, you just pass it to the biggest bloke, boom, boom, offload. He passed to another fellow, boom, boom, offload, feet, try. But against Australians, bro, you've got to build pressure, you've got to complete your sets, got to kick long, kick corners, play mistake-free football. Um, there's a big difference from playing uh, school rugby league at St. Paul's then going into the other 20s um, competition. It was, a, it was a huge gap and uh, how the games play. Uh, I think you know, it's so important for the development of a player uh, coming through the Auckland system or coming through New Zealand Rugby League as a young kid uh, to go, you know, under 20s, reserve, straight into first grade. So uh, hopefully those systems still in, in place because it worked a treat when I was there. 
the youngsters back then were very lucky. You talk about that gap between school and then going into to first grade, uh, to have uh, Tony Edel, uh, John Ackland there, uh, two very, very good coaches. What did you learn from them? Yeah, Tony Edel taught me pretty much everything I knew because uh, I came from a rugby union background and I was 16 years old. He scouted me from our St. Paul's game. So we've got a really good relationship, me and Tony, and we're really close. Uh, John Ackland, he was my 20s coach, 2010 when we won it. Um, I was very fortunate because I had ACL surgery at the start of the year, so I was out most of the season. And he let me come back into an under-20s team that was firing, and I played the last five games. And I was really grateful for John for that because he didn't really need me in the squad, uh, but he just trusted my experience and what I'd done for the previous under-20s team to um, help win the title. And, yeah, it was, it was a great year that year. Uh, was it easier playing first grade, knowing all those young guys in and around you? Uh, let's talk about some of those names, the relationship you had with them each, and and and, and what you like or remembered about those particular players. Uh, Russell, I knew Russell. He came up from Foxton. Uh, he's a big lad when he was 16. He made first grade team when he was 16. I remember Benny Mutz. He was only 16, and he was full time squad. And I used to always think, like, if they can make it into first grade squad, then I should be a chance. I've got to be a chance to make it in as well. Uh, watching Shawnee debut, that was cool because we came through the system together. Um, Seal Tonga, Licky Licky and, and Bill Tupo making the debuts as well. Bro, that was, it was such a good time back then and life was easy. Like, it was everything, there was no pressure, there was no worry. I, had, I didn't have any responsibilities, didn't have any kids. Um, none of us had any kids. And so, um, yeah, we are just enjoying the week in, week out, playing NRL and uh, enjoying the moments together. When you think about the players that were alongside you doing some wonderful things, they've gone on for great careers. SJ and you, you had somewhat of a combination. You know, it was happened in the under-20s, it happened in 2011. Uh, was that planned? Was that instinctive? And what was the relationship like with you two? Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. I, I respected him. Freakish player. I remember when I first saw him training, when he came to training, um, you know, he stepped everybody in the team, threw a cutout, stepped again. He'd do some crazy things with the ball, and no one could touch him because he was just step everyone. Bro, his ball skills, ball handling, his balance, crazy skill. I remember thinking, I was just like, man, who's this? And all the boys were thinking the same as well. Um, and you knew from that age, bro, he was going to be a gun. Uh, his kicking game as well was, was really good, and his composure at such a young age. Um, and Will, he was half, but he ran the ship. I was just more of a running half. Uh, he did all the work. Bray excelled so well, and I was so proud of him. All the boys are proud of him as well, and, and he's had a really good career, and it's, it's good to see him that he's still going as well. Talk about chasing a dream in 2009. That dream was almost uh, lived out. Uh, it, was, it was your debut match, um, but unfortunately it was a hamstring uh, that, that, that stood in the way. Talk to me about that moment when you uh, got told you were going to play first game, because I think you are only 19 then. Was that right? Yeah, I was 18, yeah, yeah. Lessons in life, uh, got the call from Ivan, finally got the call, like the see, the first grade season was over, I think it was like round 22, I think. Ivan called me on a Tuesday and said I was playing first grade. I was stoked as, rang dad, rang mum, started crying, um, told dad, yeah, come down, I'll get tickets, all that, sorting out all the family, let the family know. And then captain's run. I hadn't been injured for two years prior to that, not one injury. And then we were just jogging through a scrum move and then I did my hammy. I just felt someone feel like they kicked the back of my leg. I was like, we weren't even sprinting, we were just jogging. And uh, it was a grade two hamstring. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And so I was pretty devastated. I was pretty embarrassed, to be honest, because I told dad that I'm playing first grade. I told all my family I'm playing first grade. And then at captain's job, I got injured. So yeah, it was pretty devastating as a young kid because obviously, you know, you're chasing your debut game. That you want to want to play and represent the club. You saw all the players your age debut, and you're like, yeah, no, it's my team next, my team next kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a long time coming. And then the next season, I did my ACL in pre-season, and so I missed the whole of 2010 season. And that's when I came back for the under-20s uh, grand final game. But there was two years after that, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty rattled as a young kid. And then I finally got my opportunity in 2011 uh, to debut. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty exciting moment. I'll never forget it. 
Let's talk about that resilience, uh, because for a young kid who promised so much, um, it can be disheartening and it's easy to drop your head. Uh, where do you get that resilience from and, and, and what do you think was the difference that, that made you push through? And that, did that help you in your career after that? Yeah, it definitely did. You um, become a lot more grateful uh, because when you're sitting in there rehab by yourself, you're on a watt bike or you're on a rowing machine. All the boys are having fun. They're outside. They're playing week in, week out, and you're by yourself in the gym with Ruben, and he's just, bro, he's, <laughs> I was with Ruben training every day. Oh, bro, he used to flog me, bro. Rowing machines, wiki works, everything. Um, so, bro, the, the, those trainings built a lot of uh, resilience and mental toughness and also the way I was brought up um, doing those training sessions by yourself you become a lot more grateful from um, when you are playing football to, to enjoy it more because uh, there's some dark days in rehab when you're by yourself and it uh, builds character so when you do, are playing you, you're a lot more grateful well, if you cried the first time um, Ivan asked you to play first grade, you would have cried the second time. Uh, tell me about that moment you got the phone call. How were you told that you got your boarding pass to make your debut? Yeah, so we'd lost in 2011. We lost the first three games. And I was like, surely, surely I get a call up this week, surely. Um, and then sure enough, yeah, Ivan gave me a call and said I was uh, debuting this weekend. And uh, bro, obviously I was really stoked um, yeah, told my dad, crying, told my mum, crying. It's pretty much the same events. Um, and in Captain John, I made sure I did nothing. <laughs> I, made, bro, I made sure I did no sprinting. I was just in a dinner suit, Captain John. Yeah, I'm not doing any defence. As long as I get on that field, I need to get on that field. No, I really enjoyed it. It was in Topol versus the Sharks. They had a big pack, Gallon, uh, Jeremy Smith, Anthony Tupo. Like, there's a bit of batons on fire because they had a really good four pack. Um, so, yeah, good memories. I enjoyed my week. And then it started off into a pretty good year. We, we won eight in a row after that and we got on a bit of a run. You know, for a, a debut rookie year, uh, man, it just become pressure after pressure and you, you, you keep climbing through uh, the stages. Yeah, when you're young, you don't feel the pressure. I, just, I was just a kid having fun with some of the boys, like, you know, all of us young fellas that came through the system, Kevin Locke, Russell, Benny, uh, Shawnee, Bill Tupo, we, we were just having fun, man. And you don't feel the pressure when you're young, obviously, you don't know. It's not until you get into a senior role or a senior player or that's when you start feeling uh, the pinch and the pressure and, and mentally it starts getting to you. But it's crazy how I used to think back then. If I played now, bro, I'd be stressed out, I'd be thinking about, oh, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. The grand final, you run out to that crowd, there's a huge crowd. I remember Richard McCall, he did a, and I'm a big fan of Richard McCall, he did a video record of himself saying good luck to all of us and just things like that. Uh, it was cool. And New Zealand was behind us there, but we came up short. But I'll never forget that uh, grand final because. Um, uh, good times, man, and I took it for granted because I thought first grade was always we're always going to make the finals, we're always going to make a semi, or we're always going to because it, it comes so easy when we were young. But looking back, bro, right, like it's so hard to make the top eight. Just making the top eight is is so hard, especially in that competition. And I kind of took it for granted as well because it just happened so easy, and we thought it was always going to happen, but that wasn't to be the case. You mentioned a few things that you think were the key in making it successful for you. What else, when you look back at it now, because you as a leader uh, and being later on in your career, you, uh, on reflection, you can sort of see what was beneficial for the side? I think Ivan's coaching, uh, Ivan's style of coaching, that was a, a big reason why we went so far. He, um, he accepted you for who you were. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, Ivan, that really sticks out to me about Ivan. Yeah, he will let you be who you are as long as you, you know, produce the goods on game day. Um, and I think he, he was definitely a big reason, especially our system, how our system worked, uh, 20s, reserve grade, first grade. Uh, he implemented that with John Ecklin, and it was working a treat. The leaders that stick out to me, so I first came to first grade, Rubes was a senior player, Steve Price was a senior player, Simon Mannering, uh, Wairangi was there, Lan, Lani Hohaia was there. So some, you know, old heads, experienced. Um, and I'm really fortunate that we came through with them as the leaders and our culture was, was hard work, work ethic, 
Uh, we didn't have a big drinking culture. We didn't have a big uh, gambling culture. Uh, the boys just ripped in uh, during the week. Trainings were hard. And, uh, we, we tried to play as well as we could. So, And, you know, Simon Mannering, uh, for example, you know, I, I was with him. He's the top of the game. And I never heard him complain once about anything. Um, and that's a testament to his character. And it's something that I, ch I try to uh, do as well. They were all really good influences on young kids, um, especially myself. They, were, they had a huge impact on how I developed as a player and how a lot of the boys that came through the system uh, developed as well. Stability helps as well with coaches. Unfortunately, with you few early on, uh, three years, three different coaches. Uh, but I'd love to, to get some insight to what uh, you learned from all three separate coaches, the positive that you can take away from them. Yeah, with Ivan, I said before, like Ivan accepted you for who you are and he let me play. He didn't really talk to me during the week. He just, if I were playing bad, he'd let me know, but he just let me uh, do my thing, train and, and let me play my game and play freely. That's what I liked about him. Uh, Bluey, man, he taught me so much. I was, I was devastated when Bluey lost the job because, uh, bro, they didn't give him a chance. Um, I just didn't understand it. I was a young kid um, and, and Bluey really cared about his players and, you know, those coaches were good hearts, man. Um, he was one of those coaches, and no, I was devastated when he got uh, when he got fired because as a young kid, you don't you don't want that happening, and he cared so much about the players, eh? So I was devastated when Bluey lost the job. Uh, when Matt Elliott came in, he changed everything, um, and he brought Andrew McFadden, Cappy, and I learned a lot of Cappy. He, bro, he was a good coach. Uh, he taught me a lot defensively and defensive movements. Um, I probably learned more of Cappy than I've learned of uh, Matty Elliott, but um, he probably got us thinking in how to grind out a game, how to play to the 80th minute. Or, um, so Matty Elliott yeah, definitely implemented that of just playing 80 minute grinding footy. Favourite players? Uh, any reason why? It could be on the field, off the field, but, but guys that you love to play alongside or, or just to be at training with? Thomas Luluwai, bro. Like, when he came to the club, and he's a half and he's tough. I like playing like, you know, with, you, you know, you know Ben Monty, like you play alongside tough players, and, and that's Tommy Lulu. Like, he, was, he was only, he wasn't tall, but man, he had a heart of the line. He would put on big shots, um, but he's a legend over here uh, in the UK, in, in rugby league over here. And he told me a lot when he came to the Warriors as well. Um, so Tommy Lulu, man, he's a really good player, really underrated in NRL, I reckon, over here, he's, he's a legend. But when I look at your career, uh, 67 games, I, I can't help but feel that you, you left too soon. Do you ever question um, that you left too soon? Because I, I think you could have been one of the absolute greats of the club. Yeah, definitely in hindsight, I left way too soon. I was still a kid. I think I was 21, maybe. Um, you yeah, really ambitious. I had a manager that was influ yeah, influenced me a lot. And I was just listening to what he was saying at the time. but. Personally, I would love to. I would have loved to stay at the Warriors and play my whole career out there. But um, I was just influenced by a manager that told me, you know, Penrith was a better option for my future. And also, I had that relationship with Ivan as well. So when he left after the grand final, I, I was pretty close with Ivan, and he always said, uh, "If you're willing to come to Penrith, yeah, I'll, I'll take you to Penrith." Um, so that was in the back of my mind as well. And also, they signed Todd Larry. Um, for number 13, and I got told that he'll be number 13. So, you know, I, I was just young and ambitious. Looking back, I was just a kid, bro, like trying to make those decisions. Um, I, was, I wasn't really thinking straight, but I would have loved to uh, see my whole career at the, at the Warriors for sure. Um, you were young, you're impressionable, uh, but you know, this agent, like, did, was there some underhand tactics there too? Because um, it's a travesty that you left, man. Yeah, there's a, there's a long story with uh, my, my former manager, Ian Miles. Um, yeah, really long story. Uh, but no, I was fully influenced by him, and, and he said that, you know, Gus Gould and the Penrith Panthers, uh, they're really anxious, they really want you, they really want you to come and turn around the club. And that was the start of uh, Gus's five year plan that he always talked about uh, at the Penrith, and I was the start of that. Um, so it, it was really enticing as a young kid, but. In hindsight, like he was just trying to do that, so his contract kicked in, and my other manager, my former manager, his contract wouldn't kick in. So, just looking back on it, and it all makes sense now. Uh, we went to court with Ian uh, a couple of years ago, and 
it didn't work out too well and you learn from those lessons in life I suppose and uh, yeah I just don't want anyone else going to go through that lesson because it's a tough lesson to learn um, but no that was in hindsight again it's an opportunity to build character you get through that and, and you get stronger So Elijah just finally um, how would you sum up your, your time at the Warriors and your feelings of the club? You know the club you debut for and the club you come to the system the junior ranks with it's always going to have a special place in your heart I would love to finish at the Warriors on a training trial. Uh, I've tried three times to go back uh, during COVID, after COVID, and the start of this year, but it wasn't to be. Um, so I'm still I'm still playing footy now, but that, that place, uh, like Mount Stadium in the gym, uh, Mount Spire Stadium number two, uh, just all the memories I have there with all um, friends that I know for the rest of my life and all the memories that were made there. It's always a special place to, to go to. Well, the Warriors supporters, you know, I've, I've been at a lot of clubs, and you won't find any other fans as diehard as the Warriors supporters, thick and thin. Especially the weather at Mount Smart, especially the weather in Auckland during winter, freezing, windy, rainy, but they're still there. You know, they've got an excuse in, in Sydney, it's always hot, it's always warm, so they can go to the game. But, man, the diehard uh, Warriors fans, you'll never forget them. And I've been at a lot of clubs since then. And um, they, they'll really stick out for you and they'll support you through thick and thin and they'll always be there, man. So you know, shout out to all the Warriors fans on this show. Elijah, once a warrior, always a warrior. I want to thank you for your service and your moments of greatness in that Warriors jump on my man. No worries, Monty. Cheers, bro. Thanks for this. And I thank you for tuning in too and I'll see you next week right here on Once a Warrior. Taylor set it up. Taylor. Taylor will score. Brilliant. Warriors are in. And Taylor makes a try out of nothing. Taylor pops a ball. Mateo. That was a beautiful offload there. Into a hole. Elijah Taylor. The free running back rower. Elijah Taylor. Taylor has scored for the Warriors. Now Taylor. Elijah Taylor!